Alright, so the, the whole point about this is different people will play with different rules as to what you can do for Project Euler. Is there anybody here who is a CS major? Alright, so you might have very different rules than people who are not CS majors. There are some people who want to use very minimal programming languages. To me, that's not the goal. Um, I wrote a computer program to solve Sudoku problems. And you know, to me, the purpose of the computer is to relieve me of tedious algebra. I don't want to do tedious algebra. So one of the advantages of using something like Mathematica is Mathematica is a very high-level language. It has a lot of things already built into it. A lot of people, when they're doing something like this, they want to build up all their functions from scratch. Mathematica has a command that will give you the Fibonacci numbers. It has a command that will give you the nth prime number. And so, you know, you can write your own code to do that if you want. To me, the wheel exists. Use the wheel. Okay? If you want to write your own stuff, by all means, go ahead and do that. You learn a lot by writing your own code for stuff like this. The problem I gave you on Monday to, you know, determine if a number is a palindrome, well, one of the more difficult challenges is to figure out, well, if I have a number, how do I pull off the digits? You know, if you can stare at the number, you can read it. The human brain is a wonderful computer. You know, trying to write code in some language to actually pull off the digits and extract the digits is not so easy. Uh, if you want a good example, just look at all the calculus problems that Major League Baseball players or football receivers solve every day in terms of calculating where they should be to catch the ball. This is an extremely difficult calculus problem. And if you look at how far they get in math classes in most schools, they probably have not seen those solutions. So what I thought I would do is just go through some of the Mathematica code. Did we do any of these yet in class? All right, so the first Project Euler problem was to look at multiples of 3 and 5. So it says, you know, if we list all the numbers, let me just pull this out. If we list all the numbers that are below 10 that are multiples of 3 and 5, we get the following. Um, and, you know, this is their sum. What is the sum of all multiples of 3 and 5 below 1,000? The lower the project or the number is, the more likely it is that you can solve it by brute force in a very reasonable amount of time without being too clever. All, right, all we have to do is find all, the sum of all multiples of numbers up to 1,000 that are multiples of 3 or multiples of 5. Can someone just tell me in words a brute force way to do this? Nope, too clever. Yes? Add up all the multiples of 3 and 5, or is that what you just go through and look at them all one by one? Okay, so how you did, so you go through the numbers from 1 to 1,000, and for each number you ask it, are you a multiple of 3, are you a multiple of 5, and if the number says yes, you add it to your sum. Okay, yes? And then you subtract the multiples of 3? No, 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 we're, we're just asking them about are you a multiple of 3 or 5. We're doing the most crude coding possible. For each number, we just oh, check yeah. and so see, right, yeah. right. We're not doing anything clever, okay? Normally, you <coughs> want to do things that are at least a little bit clever. So how can we do better? Well, one thing is we could say, let's sum all the multiples of 3, let's sum all the multiples of 5, and then let's subtract the multiples of 3 and 5 because we've double counted them. What's this called? It's called inclusion-exclusion. And so if we call this inclusion-exclusion, then we can actually write some very simple code for this. We've proven formulas for the sums of the first n integers. In fact, we needed to use that a few moments ago when we were doing one of the green chicken problems. Right? So one way to do this is I created a function called power sum. No, I'm sorry, called problem one sum, which is floor of n, floor of n plus 1 over 2. It's the sum of the first n integers. Why am I using floor? So floor is the greatest integer less than or equal to n. So why am I using floor? Yes? So you want to make sure that you don't, uh, you don't go over 1,000 when you're counting your, counting your multiples. It's not, not quite going over 1,000, yes? We only want to add integers. We only want to add integers. And so, you know, we're going to be doing multiples of 3, multiples of 5. I might be counting 1,000 divided by 3, 1,000 divided by 5. If, there's not, if it's not a perfect multiple, I could have a fraction. 
Now the formula n, n plus 1 over 2, I can make n a half integer, I can make n a quarter integer, it's still going to give me a value. I want to make sure I do the right value. If I sum all the integers up to 100, and I sum all the integers up to 100.5, do I get the same value? Yes, there are no integers between 100 and 100.5. But if I use this formula at n equals uh, 100.5, I would actually get a slightly different answer. So this is just good programming to allow myself, if I don't necessarily input an integer, it's going to fix it. And so now what I do is I want to multiply uh, my function at n over 3, my multiple at n over 5. This is going to count uh, the sums of them. And I have to multiply by 3 and 5. Why am I multiplying by 3 and 5? Right. So I, I have a formula for the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. I don't have a formula for the sum of 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12. I have to pull out the common factor from every term. And that's what the 3 is over here. That's what the 5 is over here. And then we subtract off the multiples of 15, and we make sure that we only go up to the floor of n over 15. And so now we just evaluate it at 999. And, you know, this is one of the things where, you know, if you're not careful in reading, you'll get the wrong answer and you can be slightly frustrated. It says we want all the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. So you don't include 1,000. And so if it doesn't work, you know, check and see if you've done a small mistake like that. So, you know, again, I like Mathematica. I've got the stuff online. I think it's a very friendly thing to do. Here's the brute force code to do it. So I'm going to do a sum, and I'm going to do it as follows. I'm going to look at the mod of n and 3. If n is a multiple of 3, that's what n mod 3 double equal sign 0 means, then, th then it's going to pass the condition. The two vertical lines means an or. Or if n is a multiple of 5, then I'm going to add n. Otherwise, I'm going to add 0. So I'm summing over this quantity. And I'm going to sum n goes from 1 to 999. That's a very fast way of programming the brute force. If I, is that an exclusive or? Uh, it's not an exclusive or. E, if both conditions are true, it's fine. If I wanted to do an and rather than an or, I, could, I would put in two ampersands. And that's the mathematical code for an and. The two vertical lines is the mathematical command for an or. This code is very efficient. It's a small enough number that it runs without too much trouble. If instead of trying to find the sum of the first of all these numbers up to 1,000, if I wanted to do it up to 10 to the 20th, this would no longer work. We could no longer brute force up to 10 to the 20th. But we could use these formulas over here. This is just a quadratic polynomial evaluation. So this is the real issue of scaling. In theoretical mathematics, this is a formula. It works. From a practical perspective, it's not going to work fast enough. All right, the next one was even Fibonacci numbers. So this is the second problem. So each term in the Fibonacci sequence is obtained by adding the two previous terms, uh, 1, 2, 3, 5. So you've always got to be very careful as to how they're defining things. And they are defining things to have only one 1. And they want to consider the terms of the Fibonacci sequence which are even and do not exceed 4 million. What's their sum? One way to do this is to march down the line, look at each Fibonacci number, keep calculating them, and if it's even, add it to the mix. And all you have to do is calculate all the Fibonacci numbers less than uh, 4 million. There are several ways to do this. One way is Mathematica actually has the Fibonacci function predefined. Just to show you a little bit of how you do the coding, I do Fibonacci n underscore, I'm sorry, Fib n underscore means I'm creating a new function called Fib. I'm defining it to be Fibonacci n plus 1. I'm just shifting things by one index because of how they define things. So Mathematica starts off with the first and the second Fibonacci numbers being 1, we have to shift it by 1 for this problem. Rather than constantly remembering that, I'm just defining a new function. I start off at n equals 2, I start my sum as 0, and my current Fibonacci number is going to start off at the second. And now, I do the following code. While my current number is less than 4 million, my sum is my current sum plus the current Fibonacci number I'm at. So right now, my sum started off at 0, I now add in the second Fibonacci number. And now I make my current Fibonacci number the number uh, Fibonacci n, the new number I would get. And I've increased n by 3. Why am I increasing n by 3? 
still even. So the Fibonacci numbers have an interesting pattern. It's odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even. And one way to see this is induction, right? So we've already got it, you know, if you look at the Fibonacci numbers modulo 2, once you have a pattern of a certain length, it's going to just keep uh, propagating down the line. And so this is, you know, fairly simple code to just march down the line and, you know, get the value. Now, in terms of how long it's going to take to run, it will take a little bit of time, and if I went from 4 million to 40 million to 400 million, it would start to slow down. Um, other code we could do is we could just sum the Fibonacci numbers directly. You know, I know they all have even indices, and then we would just have to figure out what's the upper bound. So that's the, that's the difficult thing. You could find that out first and then figure it out. Another thing we can do is, you know, this was just playing with things a little bit to find out the values. I'll let you look at the code. Um, okay, I guess I didn't include this, but we know Binet's formula. So knowing Binet's formula, we could actually use that and use the sums of geometric series. All right, so um, the next one is the prime factors of a certain number of 5, 7, 13, and 29. What is the largest prime factor of this number? Factor integer. So you can decide whether or not you consider that cheating. And then if you do consider that cheating, you then start to learn about good ways to factor numbers and stuff like that. Okay.